In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a responsive web page. Now, a responsive web page is simply a web page that can be viewed at different screen sizes. Okay, in today's um, day and age, a lot of people are looking at websites on mobile phones, on tablets, and still on desktop computers or laptops. And we want our web pages to work across all those different screen sizes. So we need to code up our web pages. Um, to be responsive, to cater for those different screen sizes. So let's have a look at this example. I've got this um, BMW website here showing off one of their concept cars. And if I scroll down here, you can see what it looks like on a desktop computer. Okay. Now, if I want to view this on my mobile phone, we're going to have to adjust the layout of a few things. So watch what happens when I just reduce the size of my web browser here to replicate a mobile phone screen you can see a few things changed. You would have noticed the pictures got a lot smaller. That's the big one. In fact, I had two pictures down the bottom here. I took one out at a mobile phone screen view. So you can see this one here with exterior design written on it. At desktop view, it's there. But as I drop it down to mobile phone size, it's gone. Another thing that was changed was the header at the top. See, it's quite small there now, just to cater for the mobile phone screen size. Nice and big though on a desktop computer. All right, so there's a few changes that you can make to make your websites or web pages work well at different screen sizes. When we are making responsive web pages, we generally cater for three different screen sizes, mobile phones, tablets, and then your desktops or your laptop computers. So you watch as I resize this web browser. I'll move it up a bit. You can see about here, we've got the tablet view. Still pretty similar to the mobile phone layout, but pictures are getting a bit bigger and the text up here in the header got a little bit bigger. And as I go a little bit further along, you'll see the text jumps up again, okay, and gets even bigger as my um, web browser gets bigger. And you would have noticed both pictures down the bottom are now back. So if I go smaller, you'll see that one on the left disappear. As I get bigger, it comes back. Okay, so that's a responsive web page. We can view our website at different sizes, um, such as mobile phones, tablets, and on desktop computers. All right, so most of the action is going to happen later in the tutorial, okay? For the HTML section, which I'm going to do first in this video, you're not going to see any responsiveness take place. But when we get into the CSS stage, so the cascading style sheet, that's when you're going to see the responsiveness come into play, okay? So let's start simple today, and we'll do the HTML or the structure of our web page first. To get started on that, you will need to jump on over to your account to make a new folder called number six responsive design. Inside of it, make me an images folder. And inside of that, you're gonna need access to these images. So if you're in my class, I will provide them to you. If you're watching online on YouTube, I will provide a link in the video description below. So we've got the three pictures of the cars that will go in the web page, And then this little BMW um, logo here is gonna be our favicon that will go at the top of the page. Um, I've also got this info here, which is just straight off the internet, copied and pasted. So Again, if you're in my class, I'll give you a copy of this. But if you're watching online, I'll give you the link to where you can find that info. All right, so let's get started on making this responsive website, uh, web page. So jump over to brackets, make yourself a new document, go to file and save as before you type anything. Save that into your number six responsive design folder. And we're just going to call this index.html. Save it up and we'll begin typing. So I'm going to start like we usually do with the doc type tag, just to tell the computer we are making a HTML document. After that, we'll open up our HTML tags and back in the opening HTML tag, don't forget to change your language there or set your language to English. Just helps web browsers with their search results, knowing that our web page is written in English. We'll put the head section in next. As always in the head section, we'll throw in a title first of all. And the title we're writing in today is the name of this um, concept car project. So BMW Vision M Next. Okay, that's the name of our web page today. The other thing I want to put into the head section here now um, is the favicon. So that's that little icon that appears at the top of the page on the tab. So we're going to write link rel equals icon. And then we just need to point to where it is saved on our computer. So right, href equals, and go into your images and select that logo.ico. The ico file type is just another 
word for icon file type. All right, save it up by pressing Control S. Pop over to your account and open that index page up so we can see what's happening. So it should still be blank down here, but up at the top of your tab, you should have a little BMW favicon in now and the name BMW Vision M Next. That's our title. Okay, that's all we're going to do for the head section for the moment. We'll come back and add a bit more into it a bit later on, but for now we're going to start on the body section. Now in the body section, we're going to start with a header, which is just the name um, of the page again at the top. So we're going to put it in a div tag. I'm going to create the first division here and we'll give it a class name and we'll call it header. Okay, so the first division or div is called header and inside of there we're going to do a H1 heading. That basically has the same name as what we wrote before up here. So the BMW Vision M Next is going to go between the H1 tags. Um, after that we're going to put in a subheader. So just make a new paragraph with the P tags and in capital letters write the future is exciting. Alright, that's all we're going to do for the header section. You save that up and have a look. You've got your big H1 heading up here and then in your new paragraph you've got your little subheading. Um, coming in below that we're going to do the main part of our web page. So let's make another div tag here. So I'm going to divide up our page again. We'll give it a class name, and this name is going to be main, so we'll just call this division main. In the main section, we're going to put in a H2 heading first of all. That will say the power of attraction. After the H2 heading, we are going to put in a new paragraph, and we're just going to copy and paste some text from this info document just here. Okay, you'll see the power of attraction just there. We want to get that paragraph below it. Highlight it, Control C to copy it, Control V to paste it in. Okay, easy. That's the first paragraph. Coming below that, we're going to put a picture in. So just make yourself a bit of room and put in an image tag and write image source equals. We're going to look in the images folder here and we're going to start with the main picture first of all. This is the big picture of the car that we're going to chuck in. We're then going to put in some alternate text which will make sure our website remains accessible to those who can't display pictures or can't see them very well. The alternate text is simply going to say image of the BMW concept car. And you can close your pointy bracket off at the end of that line. Now we're going to use a new tag here, a BR tag. It doesn't have a closing tag, it's just the one tag by itself and BR stands for break or a line break. And basically that means we're just putting in an empty line beneath that image, so it's just a little bit of white space. If you save what you've got, go and test it just to make sure it's working well. So you should have now this little paragraph of information and a giant picture below that. Alright, looking good so far. So after this break we're going to put in the next H2 heading, and this next H2 heading is going to be written in capitals as well. It's going to say Ultimate Driving Machine Redefined. Oops, Ultimate Driving Machine Redefined. That's our next subheading and then we're going to put in a second paragraph and there's the text you need over there in the info document. So just copy and paste it in. Okay, so we've got our second paragraph in. We're going to put a couple of pictures now below that. So make me an image source tag again and we're going to click on this images folder and we're going to start with the exterior image. Don't forget the alt tag or the alternate text tag and we're just going to say exterior of the BMW concept car. Close the pointy brackets off and we're going to do something very similar on the next line. We're just going to put in the image source tag, look in your images folder and choose the rear.jpg picture. Put in some alternate text which will be very similar to what we just wrote and we'll just say rear view of the BMW concept car. Close your pointy brackets off and that should give you a couple of pictures now, plus that new paragraph in. So if we refresh that page, there's our new paragraph, there's our two new pictures. Looking good. Uh, finally, we're going to put the footer in. So I'm going to close that div tag off, so there's the closing tag. Coming in below that, we'll put in one more divider, or div tag there, and its class name is going to be footer. 
All right, so in this footer, we're going to just write copyright and we're going to do the copyright symbol. So remember, we're going to do that a fancy way. We have to use this little line of code, do the ampersand sign by pressing shift and seven on your keyboard, write the word copy and put a semicolon. And that will um, basically put in a little C with a circle around it, the copyright symbol. Right, 2023 after that, BMW and then all rights reserved. Um, that's looking good. We've got the div tag closed off there now. You can close your body tag off and you can close your HTML off. That's about it. So save it up. Go and have one final look and have a look at the bottom. You've got your footer hiding away down there now as well. So while it is an ugly looking web page, that's the structure set up. All the information and images are working quite nicely. I'm going to come back in the second video and start off the CSS. So I'll see you shortly in that video.